Greetings to this remote worship service from St. Peter's Lutheran Church for The Transfiguration of Our Lord, February 15, 2021. We gather to celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord, to receive all the blessings of His appearance, and to thank and praise Him for those blessings. We sing the hymn of invocation, number 413, O Wondrous Type, O Vision Fair. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Intro Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at His holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. 
The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb. Set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimonies of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs of the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Lectionary The Old Testament Reading for the Transfiguration of Our Lord and the Basis of Our Meditation for Today is from Second Kings Chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up into heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha, and they said to him, Do you not know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak, and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering, and come into his courts. The epistle reading is from Second Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the mind of the unbelievers, 
to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The verse of the day. Alleluia! Jesus went throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could have bleached them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day, number 414, Tis Good Lord to Be Here.
The Message Elijah the Shadow Man Mark 9, verses 2 to 9 Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And as they went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, and he saw him no more. This is our text. The author of the book of Hebrews wrote, The law is only a shadow of the good things that are to come, not the realities themselves. Shadows can help us see the things that cast them more clearly. Often the key to a good photograph is lighting it so that the shadows highlight the subject of the picture. But in the scriptures, the shadows and the foreshadowing of events can be used as a stepping stone to something more significant. In this case, Elijah's assumption or elevation into heaven is a foreshadowing that helps us see the transfiguration of our Lord from a unique vantage point. The summer after my second year at the seminary, before my year of vicarage, right after Kathy and I had become engaged, I went home for the summer. Since Kathy had never met my parents, I invited her to Minnesota for the 4th of July weekend. Now Kathy, even though she works for Boeing, is not a fan of flying. So when I picked her up at the airport in the Twin Cities, this was the days before September 11th, when you still could meet people getting off an airplane at the boarding gate, she was so intent on finding me that she walked right past me. She was looking so hard for the picture of me that she carried around in her head that she walked right past the flesh and blood me until I reached out and touched her. It is much the same in our scripture readings for today, where it may be difficult to see how either the Old Testament reading or the Gospel reading relates to us. For while both Elijah's elevation into heaven and Jesus' transfiguration on the mountain are very interesting occurrences in the Old Testament and the Gospels. It's hard to see where they have much bearing on our faith today. The shadow, the bodily assumption of Elijah into heaven, helps us to see the object of our faith, the Lord Christ in his transfiguration, with greater appreciation. The real body that casts this Old Testament shadow is Jesus alone. We fix our eyes on him, and specifically on Christ's actions as he embarks on his greatest act of glory. Through the transfiguration, God trains our eyes to see Christ's cross aright. When we think about it, the readings for the transfiguration of our Lord are hard to relate to us in any way. First of all, while the transfiguration is very interesting, it seems to relate more just to the three disciples that were involved, Peter, James, and John, than it does to the rest of the disciples, let alone to us. It is even harder to relate the Old Testament reading to the Gospel reading. How does Elijah's translation into heaven in the whirlwind relate to Jesus being transfigured on a mountain? First of all, we have to remember that all the Old Testament prophets, indeed all the Old Testament, has to do with Jesus' mission in the New Testament to redeem all people. Everything in the Old Testament points to the fulfillment of all its prophecies in Jesus. In fact, many of the Old Testament people and their actions are a type of Jesus and his actions in the New Testament. So everything that happens in the Old Testament somehow points directly to what Jesus will accomplish in his mission on earth in the gospel. 
Even Jesus himself points out that the prophecies of the Old Testament and his words and actions have the same goal. He wants us to know that God's plan and election since the very beginning of time, has been headed to the fulfillment that he will work on Mount Calvary. He warns his hearers, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them, when they believe that he is preaching a new gospel. Nothing has changed between what God was doing through his prophets, priests, and kings in the Old Testament and what he is doing through the work of his Son in the New Testament. The plan is the same. Jesus makes the same point when he says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. For even though people were reading the scriptures, at the time of Jesus only the Old Testament, to discern what God's will for them was, and what they needed to do to inherit the kingdom of God, Jesus proclaims here that the process has always been the same. It was God's intention from the very beginning that his Son should redeem the world through his death on a cross at Calvary and his resurrection from the grave on Easter Sunday. Even St. Luke reiterates and stresses this point when he says in his History of the Apostles, the Acts of the Apostles, To him, Christ, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. There is no doubt about it. Even though we imagine we see a distinct difference, even a diametrically opposed difference, between God's actions in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God declares that his purpose has always been the same, the goals of his actions have been unchanged. After his resurrection, Jesus' actions with his two disciples on the road to Emmaus prove this to be true and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Elijah's elevation into heaven by the whirlwind of the horsemen of Israel relates to the forgiveness Jesus earned in the New Testament and God's plan to care for his people Israel and for all his people. In a very real sense, this translation into heaven by a miraculous means depends completely on Jesus' death on the cross, his rising from the grave, and his ascension into heaven. Elijah goes to heaven in this miraculous way, not because of his own goodness, but because, like any believer, Jesus redeemed him through his work on the cross. The account of Elijah's bodily ascent into heaven, and as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, and he saw him no more is a foreshadowing of. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. These miraculous events, while important to their immediate audience, have longer-range consequences which deliver a message to us that God is working toward the ultimate redemption of all his people. Elijah's ascending bodily into heaven and passing the mantle of prophet to his protege Elijah provides us with an understanding of God's continual progress to the redemption of all people who believe his promises. Yet the important point here 
is not just that a living person, Elijah or Jesus, ascends into heaven, but that through the Son of God, Jesus Christ, humanity receives from God the gift of eternal life. This is just as true for Elijah, who gains heaven before Jesus' redeeming work in time, as it is for Jesus Christ, who ascends after his incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection. True, Elijah was a great prophet, but he only achieves this title after God forgives his sniveling, whining act of faithlessness in 1 Kings 19. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Elijah was great, not because of his own personal righteousness, but because God forgave Elijah his sins through Jesus Christ just as he forgives you and me our sins in the same way. In other words, Elijah's God-given faith was counted to him as righteousness and empowered him to accomplish the great feats of faith, such as his eating from the unending oil and flour of the widow of Zarephath, the raising from the dead of that widow's son, or the defeat of the 450 prophets of Baal with fire from heaven. We often forget that Moses died before the children of Israel entered the promised land because of his sin against God at Meribah, and that Elijah was not always perfect in his faith. Yet they appear with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. We are more familiar with the sins of St. Peter whose belief in Jesus faltered right before the transfiguration. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began rebuking him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. We also remember Peter's denial of Jesus in the courtyard of the high priest. Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Yet he was on the same mount of transfiguration.
the only person on top of the Mount of Transfiguration because of his righteousness was Jesus. All the rest, Moses, Elijah, Peter, James, and John, even you and I, get there through Jesus' righteousness and forgiveness. The body that cast all the Old Testament shadows is the crucified body of Jesus of Nazareth. Elijah longed to see the day of his triumph upon the Holy Cross, when the Lord was lifted up and exalted. Blessed are our eyes when we see the glory of the triumphant King, who comes to serve us with Easter victory. We too shall be transfigured. In heaven we shall have a glorified body like his body. Even now, his glory is in us. By baptism, we are a temple of his Holy Spirit. We receive his majesty in his body and blood. By God's grace, he has trained our eyes to see what is there to be seen. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. We sing the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord, for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation, and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Prayer of the Church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you revealed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who tabernacled among us in the flesh. Open our eyes of faith that we would see him continuing to tabernacle among us here in the divine service and that we would heed his admonition to listen to him, as he forgives and preserves us at the font, pulpit, and altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you revealed to us all the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon all pastors and servants of your church, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding, that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom every fatherhood under heaven is named, Support and bless every Christian home, that husbands and wives would be devoted to one another, and parents would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or enduring ongoing treatment, especially Brandon, Vitra, Rick, 
June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, Janet, and Jennifer. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June, and those we name in our hearts before you. That they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or mentally ill. Surround them with those who know your redeeming love and will mercifully care for them. Grant steadfastness to those near death, comfort to those who grieve, and the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end, that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which the Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, number 810, O God of God, O Light of Light.
we sing the long meter doxology number 805. Creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 